What is up YouTube? My name is Carl here, back for you guys, finally. And in this video, we'll have the promised look at Simple GTO Trainer. And yeah, before you guys worry, it's all just gonna be one big advertisement. I will uh, also hopefully have some interesting strategic lessons in this video as I will show you guys how I use the program and how you can use the program too to um, study in a more meaningful, more precise, more pinpointed way. So first of all, this program, um, how do you go there? Well, you go to their website and if you're smart, you use my link, which uh, will be somewhere down below, which gives me the promised affiliate cut and which gives you 10% off. So that's my favorite kind of affiliate deal. One where you as the um, consumer of the product have real incentive to use my link as it will give you a discount. So simple CTO trainer, uh, maybe I should start by saying what it is. Um, so it is a piece of software by the guys behind Simple Post Lab. So you have Simple Post Lab and Piasolver as the big two um, GTO solvers. Um, I actually don't like that word solver, but it just seems to be the way people talk about it. So yes, GTO solver. Um, so Simple Post Lab uh, is the one I had used initially. Now I'm kind of mixing between both, but Simple Post Lab is the one I basically grew up with. The program Simple GTO Trainer actually works with both Simple Postlop and Piosolver, so no worries for the Pio guys out there. So what does Simple GTO Trainer do? Um, basically, it allows you to um, play against a bot that uses your solutions for specific spots as inputs, meaning you will solve a bunch of boards, a bunch of spots in Simple Postlop or Piosolver using your preflop ranges, ranges, your specific game tree, your bet sizes, your races, and then you can train versus a bot playing in those situations and the bot will uh, make a GTO play, gets dealt a random hand and will make decisions based on the solutions you have uh, input in this program. So it's, it's kind of like playing against a GTO bot who plays perfectly according to the solutions you give him. Um, so yeah, the website, this is where you get the download. You can check some of the free stuff, get a bit acquainted with the program, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and here we have the prices. So yes, awesome 10% discount, thanks to myself. Um, so the pro version is the one I am most interested in as this is the one that allows you to create custom trainings as I have just described. Um, there's also the al alternative way. If you don't want to run your own solutions, uh, you can buy some of these packs that have been um, constructed by third parties. For example, 3 bet cash pack um, has a bunch of drills for three bad bots. So if you don't want to create your own packs, you can uh, toy around with these uh, training packs. They should work without the pro license, so you don't need to pay this. You can just buy the pack itself. Uh, I don't really have experience with these packs. Um, for me, the big advantage of this product is just that it allows me to train the spots that I'm most interested in. So uh, I've written an article or, and or made a video. No, I've written an article about how to study more effectively. And to me, it boils down to analyzing your own game from time to time and really zoom in on some of your leaks and basically have a, work, a couple of working points so you can study more effectively instead of just running a bunch of sims that are uncorrelated and checking a couple of hands and just do like lazy solves. No really good studying zooms in on a specific topic so you can dive a bit deeper in that topic and really get better at that specific point so topic for me or for many players could be for example how to defend the big blind better versus a small seabed from the button now, on some boards it's pretty difficult since you need to defend pretty wide 
So a tool like this really helps you. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll show you guys how that's done for that specific spot. So here we have a simple post lab. Um, I'm gonna blur this out hopefully, as I don't need any spam on my email address. Then you have the training packs, which you buy. Some are free, so you can toy around with the software. Custom games is where it's at, in my opinion. Playing versus the bots. Well, yeah, that's that's up to them. Still working hard on this sessions, like a bunch of overviews of games I have played, and there's a bunch of interesting stats. I assume I don't really analyze it afterwards. I just like to train and uh, look at get better through the training. Settings. This will be an important one. I think this is kind of standard, uh, but you need to link either simple post up or pio solver um, to this program so you link through uh, you link the folder where simple post is installed and then you have a couple of calculation settings i think these are good i hope these are good uh, same deal for pio solver you could link to uh, the path where the pio solver engine is installed maybe i'll open my simple post uh, it seems to be a bit too big for this yeah, uh, for this screen. Anyways, doesn't really matter. Kind of messy, um, but we'll roll with it. So what you could do is you have a spot you want to analyze. I have a bunch of trees that I have saved. So I could say button versus big blind uh, with my sizings and game tree and ranges. And what you can do is generate boards let's say we take 74 boards so there's a bunch of boards that are kind of representative for the full game um, so yeah you can go for 74 boards and save them give them a name they will be saved to my input folder but i'm not going to do that now and then you can go to the jobs tab and basically run all those boards and then this gives you a folder of 74 flops which have this game tree um, for the bottom versus big blind spot and that folder is what we will use in simple gto trainer to create our custom game so yeah let's um let's do this here let's first start with a drill game regular training is maybe the more fun one to play but a drill game really hammers down on those leaks you might have. So this one will be bottom versus big blinds, BBC defense. Uh, so game Texas hold meds up, show initial range, engine, simple post slop. It's all standard rounding. Um, so the drill will ask us to input exact frequencies, but that's a bit asking too much. I'd rather be kind of di directionally right with some of these hands. So I usually go for 25 with 33%. Um, I just leave this as what it is. Then I might have to blur this out. We go to the solutions folder. So in my output folder of simple post lab, I have a bunch of folders where I have already solved a bunch of flops. So I'm, I'm going to use this folder, button versus big blind simple. And then seeds, I've always used uh, left this at heads up, but I just discovered uh, making this video that we can make it optically a bit nicer that we get three folds. Uh, I think player two is always in position. So the button opens, small blind folds, and the big blind is player one. So we see it like this. Then next up, we go to the very specific point in the game tree that we want to train. So um, over all the flops uh, we picked, player one, the big blind checks, player two, the button goes for the small seabed. And action is back to player one, the big blind. And this is the spot we like to drill train in this spot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do it like this. And I think we should be good to go. So uh, let's have a look at this one here. And train, I, I'm having a look at my recording software to make sure this is all 
visible for you guys. Um, <laughs> and I see six players at the table instead of heads up. I don't know if this is uh, if this is more clear or not. But anyway, so button opens. We are the big blind. So it's always going to be the big blind um, reacting to a seabed. And the button is seabetting with a GTO style seabed uh, frequency and range, at least according to the input solutions we gave it. So uh, this 10 4, we are never folding, so we can drag the fold bar down all the way. So we see we work in increments of 25. And there's some hotkeys involved you can use, but for this video, I'm just gonna use the mouse slider. So we're definitely not folding, and now it's basically up to us to guess with which frequency we, we would check raise a 10 4. Uh, I'd say at least one quarter of the time, but it might be um, way higher, like 50 or 75% of the time. And I'm thinking, like, if, if our 10 4 had at diamonds, it would be a higher check raise frequency, but let, let's just go for the 25% check raise. Click on go, and then we get immediately some feedback. So we can see here that there is a mixing error, which means um, that it's mixed strategy, but we didn't mix correctly. So rounded GTO would check raise 75% of the time uh, and only check all 25% of the time. Now, like I think immediately this hand is a good one to um, talk about broader strategic aspects. So what this drill game is, it trains one specific spot with one specific hand, and it could give you the feeling that uh, you kind of know what you're doing, and you're like, Mix mixing error doesn't matter that much if you use the same, blah, blah, blah. Um, but besides knowing what to do with your particular hand, it's also re really important to uh, keep in mind the bigger picture. So maybe you're wondering like, what kind of hands is filling uh, seabeds here? Or how does my full range react here? So for some hands, it wouldn't be that interesting to look at, but for some other hands, it would be really interesting. Like for example, this hand, um, you could say it's a mixing error. It doesn't really matter that much, but it probably means that I'm totally not aggressive enough versus this small seabed. So what you can do in cases like this is um, open simple post slot. Same thing for Biosolver, I think. Uh, you click on this button here. Simple post slot will open um, and it will load your solution. So this is what a button CBAT strategy would look like with my ranges. And then you can see the reaction. Um, so I think this is really important to also take into account. Otherwise, you're, yes, you get the feeling that you're training and learning, but it's only for one specific hand and you don't really pay attention to the details. So when you're unsure, it's really important to keep in mind the whole strategic approach for this particular spot. So we could, for example, uh, zoom in on the draws. And open-enders get check-raised a reasonable amount. And I could say it looks like these, um, yeah. I should check-raise these more often, even though they don't have the vector of flush draw. So I might be getting a bit too uh, passive there. Anyway, so let's close this one. Uh, go to the next one. So this... Um, it will be a borderline call and just a 100% call. So that is correct. Um, yeah, don't really see much more info about that here. Uh, if we're playing, we can, we can look at some other uh, interesting extra information we get. Uh, here, this hand will be a never a fault. And um, at least 25% check raise, maybe 50%. Um, we'll be check raising more with the suited versions of these hands. Um, but this is a small CBAT on a board like this, blind versus uh, big blind versus button. We will also have a high check raising frequency. Uh, I'm gonna go for 25, but I'm afraid it might be more like 50 also. 
Um, so yeah, mixing error again. So yeah, I guess one of my tendencies is to not check race aggressively enough on these boards. So maybe we want to have a look at how aggressive we exactly should be. So again, I clicked on the simple post slot button. The solution is loaded. We see a super high frequency CBAT and a 16.5% check raise from myself. And yeah, looks like we're at 50% check raise with the queen 9 and the queen 10 basically. And then with the suited versions, we have a way, way higher uh, frequency. The frac race, <laughs> check race frequency. Um, so yeah, you can have a more in-depth look at how this exact strategy looks like. Um, and yeah, let's move on to the next hand here. I think I'm just gonna do a couple of those more. Then you get a feeling of how this looks like. So the queen jack can it be 100% folds. Um, obviously, continue this one. And I would also say like 25% check raise, but given the previous hands, it might be a bit more aggressive. Yeah, so I guess with the jack in there, uh, it offers you some barrel opportunities when you turn a gut shot. Well, when you check raise and it gets called, and then you turn a gut shot or a straight draw, it offers you some nice extra equity to barrel. So yeah, higher frequency check raise than I thought. Um, this is obviously again never falling, but maybe there's like a tiny check raise amount here for protection. Uh, I would, and then with the four five, like it it connects with the bottom end. Like, <laughs> how do I even explain this? Uh, with the four five, it has some connectivity with a three or a two on the turn, and that's like kind of the type of fancy with check raise. So uh, I'm still gonna go for a check call. But um, yeah, so mixing error. So I, I'll just open simple puzzle up again and show you guys what I'm talking about. So we will be check raising hands that interact with that lower end. Um, so check raising hands that are involved in this area. So the five three and the five two gut shots, and then there's also some four x with a five or a four or a deuce. So yeah, maybe interesting is that there's a very high check raise frequency with uh, trips. So like 45% of the time. So yeah, ranges are wide, the button is steepening a ton. And yeah, I, I'm personally again, overfolding in this spot, not attacking it aggressively enough with the check raises. <laughs> As you see that there's so many of them. Um, so this is, yeah, I'm showing you. I'm showing you my leak actually, or one of my leaks, and this is a spot that I would benefit from uh, training a bit more. Queen seven uh, looks like a fall to me, and yeah. So again, this shows that defending versus the one third pot seabed is not very easy. As we need to fall like the queen high with the backdoor flush draw, at least part of the time. So you could say it doesn't really matter. This this hand is indifferent. But if you fold all indifferent hands, then you are drastically overfolding. This particular hand is indifferent given the rest of your strategy would be fixed. But if you fold all indifferent hands, you will be overfolding. So we need to float some of these queen highs with the backdoor, uh, which is pretty interesting to me. Um, on this board, I only gave the one-third pot C bet, but it's of course also one where some players go for the big polarized bet on the flop already. Anyways, uh, this is about simple GTO trainer. So moving on to the next hand, boom. Okay, so obviously not falling. And although we don't really connect with the ace king queen, no, that is <laughs> worded so badly. Uh, although we're at a disadvantage regarding ace king, ace queen, aces, kings, and queens, um, we do have a bunch of jack tens, all the offsuit combos, a bunch of the suited combos. The villain is still seabending for a very high frequency, so I think we are allowed to have a check check raise frequency here on this board. 
Uh, and Jack 10 is just going to be in there. So I'd say half the time. Um, probably a bit more inclined to check raise this combo since you have the check, it, check of hearts, gives us a bit of extra equity when we're building the pot. Um, so correct, GTO agrees. Again, maybe we're interested in a bigger look at the, at the total strategy. So high frequency seabed. And okay, we, yeah, we're not allowed to check raise that often, but check 10 is the one. Check 10 is the only one that drives the check raising action. Because we have check 10, we are allowed to have some check raises and then the obvious bluffs are gonna be um, jacks and tens of hearts uh, and some jack nine with a heart in there. Jack eight, jack nine, ten nine, ten eight for low frequency. So it's basically the, the jack ten that drives our ability to have a check raise here. And we had it, so yeah, check raising it there. Moving on to the next hand, never folding this hand, uh, but I think it's gonna be a 100% call. Um, never folding this hand, and just just like on the ace ace four, uh, our check raises were located like connecting with the lower end. So also on this board, I uh, assume we check raise a bunch of gut shots that are yeah involved in the lower end, and then we would have some pairs with a five or a four. I think this six three is just not going to be a check raise, but it might be close. Like if it's six three of diamonds, it's going to be higher frequency check raise. Six three of clubs is mostly going to be a check call. So I'm going to go for a hundred percent check call, and it is correct. Um, so yeah, let's move on. This just going to be hundred percent frequency check call. So for some spots or some boards, maybe you don't always want to look at simple post up to have a total look at the bigger picture. But yeah, it's basically up to you. Like what, which boards you feel more comfortable with. Like here, you, you only train the particular hand in a particular spot. But as I said, it's important to keep the full strategy in mind. So obviously I continue. I think um, this is a hand we will use to check race with since the tan offers us some nice barrel opportunities. Uh, very similar to the, I don't know what it was, check four on queen nine something. So let's go for half the time. Uh, probably less than half the time. Yeah. A uh, board like this, king six, always going to be continue. And I think it's a nice hand to check race with, but it's also still king high, so it also works nice as a check call. I think if we had queen six of diamonds, it would be a higher frequency check raise. So I'm going to lead towards the 25% check raise here. Might be higher. Okay, yeah. Um, and yeah, you could say that... You could notice that some boards are the ones you struggle more with. And then it would also make sense to train to have a separate drill that doesn't have the 74 flops as an input, but only has the boards you are struggling with as an input. So not only can you zoom in on the spots, if you just feed the folder that you're using, if you only feed it the flops you feel you're struggling with, like these low boards where you need to check raise a ton on and continue a ton on with overcards versus a small c -bet. so um, then you can just train only those. And that's also something I would probably benefit from. Um, but it could also be that king, deuce, deuce, rainbow board. Well, yeah, it's still kind of similar. Anyways, you, you get the gist. Um, let's see, I'm already, already rambling for a while here, so let's just make this our last hand. And I think this will just be 100% uh, check call. Check raising a bit more when we have a backdoor flush draw. So, boom, correct. So let's end this drill here. Uh, now what do I do? I'm actually not sure here. Not very good for a tutorial. I thought I could click here. Maybe it forces me to play 50 hands before it gives me the results. No, okay, so we can still here look here. We have a summary of our drill. And then there's like a bunch of stats you can look at. To be honest, 
these things here on the left I haven't found too useful or maybe I haven't really seen it if you play like thousand hands instead of 50 or 10 maybe then you get a nice view of um, I play my open enders too aggressive or not aggressive enough same for flush draw same for king highs and all that stuff think when you don't have a big sample this middle part will be the most interesting so it's just you gto um i am folding a bit less than gto which is surprising to me um, but you see that gto uh, tends to play a bit more aggressive than i do with more raises so yeah that's that's this part um there's still more for me to discover to get the most out of these drills but yeah, I just showed you the drill. Now I also want to show you a regular game using the same set of flops. And then you play further, you play more than, uh, sorry guys. So you, you play further than just a specific pot you zoomed in on and you can choose if you mix positions or if you're always going to be button or always going to be big blind. So this is useful to yeah learn how to play more than just a flop as maybe on the flop you're training like i need to call with these weak hands i need to check raise these hands but you also need to play turn and river in case filling calls or continues in some way so um learning how to play them on the flop is step one but well probably you're gonna be stuck with a wider and weaker range than you're used to on turn and river so it's really important to also know how to follow it up. Like uh, fixing the leak on the flop isn't enough. You you need to know how to continue afterwards. So um, yeah, I think the hardest part is big blind defense. So our position will be out of position. Let's give the name like that. Um, solution directory again. Going to the simple post flop output, selecting the one with I only have the small seabed size on the flop, and I only have like 70% um, turn barrel or something, so you won't see over bets in here. Obviously, in real life, players can use every single bet size, and maybe you also want to train versus over bets, but I kept this simple for yeah simplicity's sake. Also, when I'm using this set of flops and I'm the button, it will only give me two turn options, being a turn barrel or a checkback instead of turn barrel over bet or checkback. Uh, I think that's maybe a bit more useful to train the overall strategy instead of having a bunch of options and we're indifferent between all the options. Um, and yeah, let's... No, let's let's keep it this way. Or well, no, sorry. I'll make it six max again. Fold, fold, fold. Button opens. Fold. Big mind calls. Save, save. So now we have our regular game. We can go for the drill. So this will take a while sometimes. So um, you see that we don't need to pick a frequency anymore. We just pick our move. Uh, but I still think same as my comments for the last hand. Uh, it's it's important to keep in mind the overall strategy. So you can all always use a simple post flop um, button here and open the solution to zoom in a bit more. So I think this queen five of spades is one of the hands that's borderline hand that I'm probably falling too often. Um, and I think we need to continue with it. Uh, there's also a random number generator here in case you want to use that so when I make training videos and when I play the low number is the more passive action so uh, I'm gonna go for a call here although maybe it's, it's just a raise or fold so I'm gonna go for a fold but let's say we check raise it 50% of the time um, so it gives you some info about the AV, but let's go let's go back there. Oh my God, he's playing further. Um, so 
what you can see here is the frequency with which the actions are played. So it is a very high frequency fault actually, and only a 5% check raise and a 10% check call. Of course, I don't exactly know all these frequencies. I'm just trying to give some direction here, um, come up with like a directionally good strategy. Um, I feel like this trains me that some of these borderline hands can be used, but I shouldn't be overdoing it. So it's not even a 50% check raise. Uh, and I think a fun thing about uh, the regular game is that we also see villains and so we get to see what he's playing and how he's playing it. Next hand, so this went check check and now I want to turn actions onto us. Uh, you see that I gave a bunch of sizing options for the turn lead after check back. Maybe this is also something you don't like in your game tree so you just run your sims with a uh, simpler set of turn options. Um, this will be 100% check. Not 100% apparently. Some small bets, interesting. Uh, sort of gonna have to check here again. Little checks back, yeah. So this is pretty standard hand. 655, so we see uh, villain checks back. Uh, it's check nine. I think we're definitely gonna lead and I'm not really sure about which sizing we wanna pick, but I think check nine is nice to bet for the bigger size here. So villain faults. Can we look at the frequencies? Yeah, so we see it's mixed between all three sizings, but mostly used for the bigger slash medium size. So this is bet size into a pot of five. So yeah, we have two overs, gut shot, and the nine of diamonds, which offers us some uh, bluffing hands on a flash run out. Uh, Ace, not a good card for us. Villain will be checking back a bunch of aces. Or like if this was a three or a two, we could lead our hand, but now we're just gonna have to check fold. It's actually doing stuff. It's bleeding small into the ace. Um, and yeah, so we're we're check folding. Um, same here um, as uh, the other spot we encountered on the ace king queen flop. So we are behind in uh, two pair combos and set combos. But we do have offsuit combinations of the flopped straights. And here actually there's another offsuit flopped straight, the check nine. So I feel like these two hands will be the drivers of the value part of our check raising range. And then there will be a bunch of draws uh, similarly to the, the last hand we encountered. Um, the frequencies of the check raise, I'm, I'm pretty unsure. Um, but yeah, let's go with it. it I mean, it will be, whoa, it will be a really high frequency check raise. So that's higher, more aggressive check raises than I would usually do. Uh, but yeah, again, keeping in mind, it's button, wide range, C running for a small size, so wide range. So going to be attacking that aggressively. Uh, villain checks back. We will also be checking. And this eight. So for this river, it would also be interesting to have a smaller size. Maybe I want to bet this for a uh, one third pot size. Like it might be too thin of a bet if you use this sizing, the 375 into five, but it might be fine as a third pot. So when you counter spots like this, it can give you some thought about how to find you your uh, solutions more and have a more accurate sim um, to train with. So I'm gonna check and it'll be a check call. So 
So when looking for hands, more hands to continue with, you could think that the five connects in some way and I have a backdoor flush draw and an overcard, but I think this hand is just gonna be too weak to do something with. So it's 100% fault. Uh, just to continue, not a check race. Don't need to say too much about that. Oh. But simple post flop disagrees, so here we see the exact frequencies. Pretty high. No, sorry, not pretty high, but at least some check race frequency, which I would never have here with the hand. And now on this river, like 7x is, is going to be basically the bottom of our range. So I think we want to bluff with some 7x's. Do we want to bluff with this one? I'm not really sure. I think we do. And I'm going to go for this size. So actually, yeah, you see the bigger size and the overbet size both being used. Um, check raise for similar reasons as we have already encountered uh, is a nice option because the, the 5 and the 10 offer, on, offer, offer, oh my god, almost time to quit this video, offer us some reasonable barrel opportunities on the turn with extra equity, uh, but also not going to be overdoing it, not going to be more than 50% of the time or something like that. So we have our low number, let's say we go for the check call. Um, so check call is played 68% of the time and check raise 32% of the time. I checks, villain checks back on the ace of hearts and now on the three river. Uh, I feel like we need the lead and this hand is strong enough for two times spot. And definitely makes sense for us to attack a reasonably capped range with um, some bigger bet sizes. Also allows us to bluff more. And we definitely still have some bluffs like the, the gut shots, queen 10, king 10 that would need it, that would check all the flop. And then now, if they have a heart, they, they are a nice hand to bluff with. So I like this here. <laughs> and our GTO villain snap jams. And our hand is gonna be a fault versus uh, this line. Uh, this guy plays optimally, and uh, we won't need to defend 10 5. Tricky, tricky villain. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, so it's split up between a check, so we still have some check raises in our river range. Small bet, not often used, and then a regular bet size and an over bet size. And yeah, versus jam, you need to fold. Like we also have some boats um, in our range to uh, defend with, defend versus jam. Uh, but I think I'm just gonna end the video here. Uh, maybe you're, you're like, oh, that's because you don't know what to do. Well, I do know what to do. Even though we have a gut shot, we will check fold, I hope. Oh my God, we're... Okay, maybe I didn't know what to do. We don't have a gut shot, we have an open ender. Yes, it's it's the pressure of you guys looking. I didn't know what to do. So yeah, let's end the video here. I do think we bluff with this hand. Yes. Um, we bluff sometimes and we can mix in the overbets. Okay, so let me set up a bit more straight for the end of this video. This is how you can use simple GTO trainer for very specific studying, zooming in on the part particular spot you are struggling with. So button versus big blind with a small C bet might be a good start. Um, but keep in mind that knowing how to play on one street is only one, one uh, part of the equation. You also need to know how to continue with, with it on future streets. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Like you're not done with studying once you know how to uh, check call properly on the flop as some turn and rivers are not super easy. You will need to uh, 
bluff cats with some very weak hands. And if you're not used to that, you will maybe properly check all on the flop, but then overfold on the turn and or river. And I feel like I'm already giving too many, <laughs> too much strategic advice away here. But anyways, guys, this is how you can use Simple CTO Trainer in your studies. I think it's most powerful uh, when combined with Simple Postlab or Pio Solver. Um, but if you're not that far up in your career, you can also use Simple GTO Trainer with some of the packs to train. All, although, like, I'm promoting Simple GTO Trainer, but I would say buying one of the solvers is a better buy when you don't have a solver yet. Uh, but Simple GTO Trainer is a step afterwards, and yeah, I think it helps you doing some focus studying. Also, when you're in a downswing and you still want to play some poker, you can use Simple GTO Trainer to play versus the bot and like, yeah, um, play well and don't lose any chips in a downswing. So uh, that's it for this video. So quick spammy advertised reminders, use my link to get 10% uh, off, link down below, promo the text up. Um, also check out this awesome merch. Um, I did a shout out to the two buyers in my previous video and all of a sudden I had two extra guys buying them. So boom, thank you for guys uh, who have bought this t-shirt. And yes, that's it for this one. See you eventually back in one of the next ones.